All right, guys, check it out. We're going to do something paintball related again, and we are going to sink our teeth into a Sand Ridge Auto Pack. Now, this is almost, I guess, a consignment in a way. The man is buying this from me, and he wants a full restoration on it before it goes, which I am cool with. This is the plate that goes here. This is the board holder. If you are not familiar with Sand Ridge Auto Cockers, these were the original electronic auto cockers. Before the E-Blade came out and all that stuff, this was the first one. The coolest part about these are they are closed loop, meaning this is a Hess sensor, and that is a Hess sensor. The RAM has a magnet in it. So this board knows when this is back and when this is forward because of these Hess sensors. So this is a fully self-timing setup where it's going to keep letting this well go on the one solenoid until it senses the magnets near this, this back sensor so it knows it's fully cocked. That's going to keep pushing forward until it's here, until the front sensor sees it. Once the front sensor sees it, it's going to release the sear. And it won't do it until it sees that, that cycle's happening. It also has an eye, a very old eye, uh, bounce beam style, that also times in with it. It has to see the bolt leave. The bolt has to be a light-colored bolt. bolt has to leave. bolt has to come back. So it was... Uh, Super advanced for uh, for paintball marker kind of stuff. I mean, you have this giant box because they couldn't fit everything in the frame in the original one, but this is the original uh, F5, I think they called it. Tornado, some shit like that. But, yeah, it could basically go on any autococker from back in the day. This is some FBM body. And, yeah, we're going to do a full-on tear-down, rebuild, make this thing beautiful. That's the That's the goal. Get rid of all these wires, put them all back inside, and I gotta grab a flathead. But yeah, there's some other tricks I want to do as well with this, but uh, we'll pop the eye off first. So this is way pre eyes on other paintball markers. This thing came out. I actually forget when Sand Ridges came out. It had to be late 90s, early 2000s. Like, before eyes were on other markers, these things had eyes. It's this old-ass Omron switch, but which is nice, because this is just a, a, a factory part that you can go and buy. So, yeah, that's just, you pull it out, put the new one in, it's good to go. And this marker needs a detent added to it, uh, needs a cocking rod, and just needs some general cleaning up and whatever cool stuff we can actually end up doing to it. The RAM, these are SMC RAMs, or free flow RAMs would be uh, the normal paintball equivalent to it. Uh, they're spec slightly differently, but... They are essentially a free, flow, a free flow RAM. They just have a magnet in them, which is an option to get an SMC RAM. That's a Japanese company, Japanese pneumatic company, SMC. Yeah. So as you can see, there's two Mac 44s, the older than the Mac 43s that you're used to seeing in more modern stuff. One of them controls the this RAM, the regular RAM on a regular autococker that you notice. Other controls this RAM, which controls the sear. So it's just a, a RAM that controls the sear, which is really cool in its own right. Now we got to try to break this thing down really carefully. Probably lose this bottom line the way it is. We're going to lose this reg because an anus reg, no one wants an anus reg. Period correct for the time, but it, it was garbage then garbage now. Always gonna be garbage. Just meant to throw out. <laughs> I didn't realize it'd be so long, but yeah, it makes a lot of sense. This bolt needs help, obviously. If not a full replacement, but we'll do something real cool with it. That. board is being held in by the switch there. 
those two. That. Yeah, all that needs to get cleaned up pretty dramatically. This is the old circuit board. What a beauty she is, too. See, with one MOSFET sitting on it. Uh, what else is this? Microchip. It's amazing they had chips like this back then, too. Considering some of the other stuff people were using. A couple chunky capacitors for a uh, for board mount. What this is. I'm not really an electronics guru, so I really don't know what that is. I don't know what these two do. There's a lot of pins right up there. Those are for the eyes. And the solenoids are controlled by these up here. There was a component here at one point that, that's not on this particular board. I do not know the uh, the history or what's what on the Sandridge stuff. Nice. Nice circuit board. Yeah, there's solder on these. Look at that. I don't know. Maybe we'll get some help to try to figure out what these are for. But those were out of it as per when I own this. There, grab a German. A Krauss. To assist in taking this apart. I try to lose this too. I, I gotta see if I have uh, something that's black or green because it's just not right to die or possibly a cycle ballistics, but looks a little too nice to be cycle ballistic. But yeah, that's uh, look at that. That is gonna be a problem. What are the odds this does not strip? Oof. Lucky guy today. Oh, shit. I think that's a die. But yeah. If you look at, the more you look at it, it's a cocker. This is an angel frame, actually. I don't think, no, the frame is an angel. It just looks like an angel frame. It's an angel trigger. So this is a good clue of the time range. This is Angel LCD Trigger. This was out when the LCD was out, early 2000s. And it's, it, it looks so much like an angel frame the way they did it. Uh, I can't believe me of all people doesn't have an angel frame just sitting there to compare it to, but that's just called poor planning. Uh, <laughs> here's a marker. The angel frame, that's that frame. They are literally identical to you get to how chunky it gets up here. Really nice. How different, uh, change the grip pattern too, which is also very nice. Goes back to 45 grips from the angel grips. Uh, the front, these came with micro rocks, which is nice. SMC ramps, nice micro rocks. Dual Mac 44s. And yeah, besides that, I think this is also, this is either a Clipper or an SMC product here. Uh, it's a Clippered RAM. This is a very, this little RAM's a Clippered, which is cool. That's going to be a pain in the dick to get out. Two little bolts holding it in that screw in the back there. And yeah, uh, all of these fittings are. Like grass, I think. I think they are. But they're just push in fittings, which is nice. See how it goes from the uh, LPR into both max solenoids, which is really cool. I don't know how to attack this, honestly. Uh, I'm going to try to pull the solenoids off. We got to work on everything. Weaver. I don't even know if I have to take that off right now, but we got to rebuild the micro rock as well. 
everything has to get built. It has to get very old. Like another flat. Just the industrialness of it. It's so cool how they did this. Check it out. So the front solenoid goes to the. Uh, well, that's ported off. So this is acting. This is a Mac 44, which is normally a four way valve. It's acting as a three way valve. And that is heading back down to the. Uh, this is a single acting ram, then it's not a double acting, which makes sense. Saves it a little room. All right. That is awesome. I love that. That's like an industrial piece. The Weaver 7A, yep. They're just using industrial products. It, it's awesome. So. These back parts are hard to get in a five or a six volt capacity, 1.8 watt. That's hard to get. You might have to order that directly from Mac, but you can still do it. The front part, I think these brass ones are supposed to not be awesome. Like they're supposed to have been transplanted by now. So you might locate a new front piece, the actual uh, spool piece, and replace those. But now we took all that weirdness off. It mostly looks like a cocker. Uh, let's take. The rock off. We'll take off the fitting first. And we'll try to pull the rock off of it. Then we get the rest of the front block off. These fittings are cool, but even if we break one, it's not really a big deal. We can order these. Wow, man, they got that in there. That's awesome. But my German's too big. Can't fit. Yeah, I don't want to nick that up. So, I mean, it's not the best of shape, but. It's a customer's marker. I don't want to nick things up. So I really don't want to try to fix. Let's. Bring that up as far as we can. I'm assuming that should actually be up there. But I guess we can tweak the timing of it this way. Look at this. The feedback. It's incredible. This is such an incredibly cool marker. That's going to do that, huh? And the other cool part about this is, you know, all of this stuff, even though it's super unique to paintball, it's not super unique stuff. We can buy another one of these. This is not a hard thing to buy. You might need to by the looks of it, but... But yeah, this RAM is a, a, just a factory product. That was just assembled nicely.
gonna put these back like this. Cause I'm not sure if these matter, but I wanna put the front one back on the front and the rear one back on the rear. So let me just look at that. I'm not gonna be able to tell. Foreshadowing, this is gonna suck when I have those backwards. The ramp's frozen up. Huh, what happened? Might need to replace the ramp. But that's okay. But yeah, that's uniquely cool about these is they were so sophisticated, especially for the time period. Even a modern standard, markers aren't closed loop, like a, a servo motor or something like that. They're open loop, just sends a signal, does what it does, has no recourse or recollection what's happening. This was very closed loop for its time period and for the modern time period in paintball, which is incredible. here with the hammer all right check it out Whew. god there's just a lot of stuff there we'll have to delve into that in just a completely different setup So there's the uh, the base disassembly. Take the valve out and everything as well. But this is uh, step one of this video. Now right, let's start making them happen. Um, these need to come apart a lot more. They are not in the greatest of condition. <laughs> All right. Well, at least that's just the sticker that's rusted. <laughs> so yeah, these are have been in better shape in their lives. We'll work on cleaning those up best we can. Don't rust it too. Look at that. We got ourselves into a good one here. Still gotta tackle this. Some things are coming to uh, my knowledge a little better, just looking at some stuff. I guess let's finish the body up. We'll see how much time he gives me with this, but I'm going to try to do some more custom solutions on some of this. Well, 
Not that it's necessary, just I don't exactly love. Not even love, that's the wrong word. I, I just there's some possibility here for something a little cooler. Because of all this open space we have. One of these days, right? Eighth inch. It's always an eighth inch. They're just unnaturally large. Can't expect them to be that big, but ooh, that does not have a whole lot of uh, retainage in it. Work on that as well. Valve. Cool. Let's throw some lights on too, right? Hey. All right. So the O ring decided it wanted to stay. That's unique. Hmm. That. <laughs> Woof. All right. So this is a lower, uh, 99 spec lower, uh, regular auto cocker valve, just uh, WGP style, but the front super small, uses a 99 style front block, but then the body threaded for a, uh, assuming this is angel threaded, uh, we can try to pull it out, but it's not really necessary. No detent in it at all, I was thinking maybe it was in here. But that's not even big enough to put a detent, so they just went no detent on it. I think it's an FBM, a five-ball mountain body, as a local company to us. But time to go back to the uh, the white elephant here. Oh, so much stuff. <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna take this apart slowly. And try to ruin everything. Let's try to use the smallest hammer we can to tap on something small like this. Right. Lose the angel trigger for right now. Tasty about that. Holy shit, look at that. There's a micro switch buried there like the old uh, angel LED style. I think we're going to lose the front of this here. That's got a lot of wobble. We can clean that up too. But we got to lose that little. I don't know. 
there. Big. Small angle. I don't think there's an Allen in there. This. Well, they crushed that to go in one way. I just kind of guessed it right. So, that's got a lot of... Wow, that's a really tough gear, man. Help myself here. Pose. This ram is two of the or one of the tiniest little nuts I've ever seen. Here a minute here. Thank you, Hans. Oh, no. You gotta spin that out. Holy shit. Hold it in place. This is such an autococker. It, it's just so complicated and tight. And when it works, guys are going to be awesome. Get that whole thing out yet? But I think we can get to that tiny screw or a tiny nut or ugh, tiny bolt. Oh, heard it crack. This is going to be fun one. I'm going to have to source a new one of these or a new two of these, but holy shit. Maybe I can get them at Allen's or something like that. This is miserable. I'm going to assume it's like a 440 thread. That's close enough to it. Break. Oh my god, spring returned up there. The stuff you learn. Uh, it could be 632nd, actually. That's not so bad. We can get something that works there. How the hell did we get something now? Can't 
can't go up. Got to come down. Oh, let's take. Clevis off? Really? That deer. This guy's serious. If we pop out the micro switch, those are really in there. <laughs> Holy shit. I thought it was going to be a return spring in there. But I guess maybe they want to have uh, more spring. So they put it there. <laughs> That's awesome. Hell yeah. The Clippard ramp still feels pretty good. So. Oh, it's a. <laughs> it's supposed to be a double acting ram. Instead of buying a single acting ram, I guess, I don't know why they picked the double acting ram. Maybe it's smaller. And they just put the spring externally. <laughs> That's awesome, because you got a port here and a port here. So this is supposed to be a, a really tiny double acting ram, uh, just like the, the three-way ram is. Like this guy. That's sticky. I don't like that. We're going to replace that, too. Which is kind of unfortunate. I looked up on their website. And they don't offer this RAM anymore in 630-second threading. Which isn't the end of the world, because you can get it in 640 threading, the same RAM. The threads are finer than this, but that's actually probably a good thing, because these aren't actually complete threads. These aren't big enough of shafts to have complete 630-second threads. I think. I mean, unless I'm getting my, my stuff back, which just doesn't feel fantastic, you know? Like, it's missing a lot there. So, feels smooth. I just don't think something's right with it. But, actually, I have, like, three or four of these left over with the magnet in them. So, we're good now for this. But, in the future, if anyone's looking to replace this RAM, or even this RAM for, like, a free flow cocker, because it's a free flow RAM as well. They just didn't have a magnet in it. You can order it with a magnet without. They're only, like, 20 bucks. So, they're really not that expensive. But it's not going to thread into a standard caulking rod. You're going to have to make a custom caulking rod for them. But that's not the end of the world. It's probably a better thread to use anyway. But yeah, so food for thought on that. They machine that down to fit it in. They bolted it in. Put one fitting on it. And then put this up here. And I guess that's super tight makes sense because it'd be really nice if there was some kind of spring guide on this but I don't think it would fit because of uh, the machining that down I think I don't know like everything else we will start revisiting it see what happens if we even get this apart this is gonna be hard to get through <laughs> but that's an awesome little ramp so yeah, now I got a bunch of wires to do something with. These were hacked up a little bit. Okay, they took the, uh, that's not great. I wonder if that's supposed to be without the, the lever on it. The D2F, so this is a, an Omron switch, so it's a, a real switch, which isn't surprising, especially aboard this old that. All of these are, you know, really name brand components, most likely. Like, I see uh, ST on that. That's uh, 
one thing. It's a microchip, brand microchip. ST is, I, I forget. But yeah, these things look like, uh, some of them look quality. Definitely hand soldered. These, because they're all crooked. The older are uh, the, the stronger capacitors. These are little capacitors, the three of those. Two big caps. That's the power. This is a MOSFET. That's the ST. It's a logic level, I believe. Look at all the little X-ring they did there. That's neat board. It's like the solder. That's cool. That's just trying to get big power through it. All right. So let's figure out what goes where. I know all this stuff is kind of standard hardware, but I don't want to break any of it because the lead time on this stuff is kind of hard, kind of long. That's not going to work, is it? I was going to say. I'm curious about the eye with this one because the eye was drilled post or the the hole in the uh, trigger frame for the eye was drilled post uh, everything else because you can see it's raw. So I'm curious about that. It's not a huge channel either to put all that shit in it that they had in it. Oh God, look at that. <laughs> oh man. That's some old fun right there, man. Oh, that thing is a funnel connector to get. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, eight. That's curious. Three, six, eight leads there. Um, the eye itself has three leads. So these go to something else. These go to, I believe, these two that are soldered up, which is strange, because uh, the eye was functioning. But that makes too much sense that these go here. And this big honking block goes here. And that's the power, so... It's all not so bad. Take the solder off those. This will clip back on. No idea which way it goes, but we'll figure that out. Which is so strange. The eye was blinking red, so but I don't think these were ever connected unless they were just just a whiff of a connection on them. I don't know, this is a marker I haven't had a part really. And it's kind of taking it for what it's worth. Holy shit. So, let me think about this. There's four wires going to the... Oh, man. All right, let's just start. Doing the autopsy here. Oh. That's clear as mud. Got resoldered on a couple times. Oh, this is the this is the particularly sweet job here. It's like a rectum. Rectum nearly killed him. So a lot of grounds are going together, I think. That explains why I only have eight pins at the board. Look at that big boy. <laughs> All right. Oh, beautiful tape. I, mean, I 
hope whoever did this got it working for whatever they were intending to do. At the time. So many loops they made, too. Oh, my fingers are sticky. Yeah. Okay. That was factory done. This was factory shrink tube. That was uh, possibly factory pinched right there, but whatever. So I'd go blue, and this is where I think they lost it. I'm willing to bet, because look at all these right here. Someone... At some point or another, smash this thing together trying to uh, just work with it. And then they just had red wire <laughs> that they fixed everything with. Holy shit. A couple times. Oh. So. All things lead back to Rome, right? And uh, these two. Oh, there's so many. All right. So the two negatives tie in. I'm assuming they're negatives. They have to be negatives because they tie into the two negatives for the solenoids. Those all go back as one wire. It turns back to blue like every other fucking wire in this thing. And ironically, there's only two blue wires down here. And I have one there. That's for the trigger. I have two here and two here. So I have four blue wires up here and only two down there. That's, that's great. All right. Oh, my God. Well, I think I'm done for the night. Uh, next, I'm going to have to start deconstructing this, cleaning it up. I want to put it back together, not in the marker. Just make sure I can get these things clicking. And this needs to get cleaned up as well. This is no better than anything there. I switched it. Really nice switch. Oh my god. What is that? All right. What a strange, strange. It's awesome. It's really awesome. Look at this big hunk of Delrin they made this out of. Too. This is just solid block machined out. No 3D printing back then, so this is absolute just machining, baby. Not great surface finish, but this thing got the job done. Oh, it's so cool. <laughs> it's so cool. And the funny thing is, these Macs probably flow a ton of air through them, so I don't know how much benefit QEVs would do on this, but I am almost tempted to try to put QEVs on it as well. And see what happens. But yeah, alright, so that's, uh, Holy shit. Let's uh try to find a little razor knife before I go. Might as well end on a bad note here, you know?
goal here is if I can split all of this. Have a much better way to tell which wires go where. Really confusing here too, man. Oh, there's another connection somewhere in there. Look at that shit. Tying more glues together. That explains some things. The amazing part is with all this going on, this was a functioning market. Like it clicked, the solenoids, both of them clicked, the, the eye light went on. It was sensing things. That's the that's the truly amazing part. That in the condition it's in, I bet it would have cycled poorly, but cycled. Maybe. Camera cut out there. Uh, I don't know what to do yet. There, there's got to be a better way. This can't be the only way to do this. Like this is. Oh my god. But we'll figure it out as we go. Alright, that's enough fun. Now for the night, I got this to a decent state. I'm ordering a bunch more of these, even though I don't need them right now. I just don't know if I'm good. These are Legras or Legris fittings. You can get them right off McMaster Bar. Not hard to find, which is awesome. And they'll be here tomorrow because it's McMaster Car, which is great. These, the 6 volts, hard to find, but not the fronts. I mean, you can still get them made. Completely get them manufactured. But... Thinking about trying to replace the two fronts, trying to clean up the uh, actual spin of the spool. Sorry, uh, the, the magnet. Try to clean this magnet housing up. And we'll replace the front of these just because. Something a little newer. That's where the uh, the, the O-rings are and everything and the spool and all that stuff. Board, you know, it's uh, it looks good. It's in good shape. It obviously functions. We know that. This needs help. Lots of help, lots of help. So I'll give it help as well. Uh, nothing crazy. This is an off switch, pretty simple. What the fuck is this? That one's not so bad. The board, it's not bad. It's in good shape. Weirdly, there's nowhere to, uh, I thought maybe I was missing screws, but there's no way to mount this thing in here. This doesn't have a mounting hole. <laughs> so it just kind of lays in there with the wire on it. Uh, which way did my wire go? I think it lays on this side, actually. These wonderful wires, so. 9 volt would lay in there. Oh, yeah. Pretty cool. This is one of those shames. I wonder if the source code for this is still in existence. Because, like, someone could remake some of these or something a little cooler. And this is a, a super awesome cocker, honestly. These things are cool as shit. But some of these components obviously are failing. But we can get 99% of these things. This is a clipper drum. I'm sure you can find all of these. This needs heavy modification, though. So if this thing's not working, we'll get something that works. But it's not uh, not impossible. These are now impossible with this uh, with this threading. You need to get a different threading if you're going to get a brand new one of these. I have a few. Luckily, I'm not even sure why I bought them, but I did. And, uh, yeah. So 
besides everything else is pretty good. This is a Weaver. Weaver 7 Ace. So this is literally just like a Weaver clamp. And I'm assuming they drilled and tapped something for the solenoids. Makes sense. And yeah, this thing is, uh, you know, it's really complete. It's nice to see that's all complete. It's still wired. And yeah, it just needs a, a hell of a lot of cleaning work to get this thing back into uh, some fighting shape. I'm going to order some new hardware, too, for a lot of this stuff. Uh, this is kind of coarse. Small, but I think I'm going to try to get these with uh, hex heads on them instead of that. That is a miserable little bolt to get at, and it was missing one of them, so someone was screwing around, but didn't get fully through it. This is cool, but it needs work, like every other part of this. Not so bad in there. This whole thing wobbles on the pin there. That's cool. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> it's just so cool. <laughs> Alright, uh, enough of this. On tonight. See you guys.